Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank series. This is the series of videos where I give you practice questions, and the purpose of these practice questions are twofold. One, I want to train your brain how to approach questions so that when you sit for USMLE or Comlex, you've already worked through some of these challenging second and third order questions, so your brain already has the neural networks in place to answer what ends up being a really tough question. And two, I want to talk about test taking strategies because I don't feel that that's talked about enough in medical school and beyond. And so in these videos sort of embedded within the content section of these high yield video question bank examples, we'll talk about some strategies that you could use to answer these questions correctly. So let's get right into today's practice question. A 39 year old female with a past medical history of hypertension and narcolepsy presents to the emergency room accompanied by her family for, quote, emotional problems, end quote. The patient is somewhat reluctant to speak, but her family describes intermittent periods where the patient appears to be, quote, talking to somebody who isn't here, end quote. These episodes are reported to have occurred randomly for the past six months and tend to occur shortly before the patient gets out of bed in the morning. Her family denies any depressive or manic symptoms. She has no other reported past psychiatric history. Her family states, quote, when she's having an episode, we will shake her and tell her to snap out of it, but she's convinced that somebody else is there, end quote. Her vitals reveal no acute abnormalities. Which of the following elements of this presentation are fundamental to the correct diagnosis? A, must occur for at least six months. B, comorbid with hypertension. C, generally occurs while awakening from sleep. D, lack of any past psychiatric history, or E, occurs independently from depressive or manic symptoms. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this question. And now I'm going to give you the answer. So pause now if you don't want to see the answer. The correct answer to this question is choice C, generally occurs while awakening from sleep. Now this question is talking about hypnopompic hallucinations. And before we talk about test taking strategies and how you would eliminate incorrect answer choices here, let's briefly do an explanation of what are hypnopompic hallucinations. Hypnopompic hallucinations are hallucinations that occur as a patient is awakening from sleep. They tend to be vivid and patients experience them. Uh, patients experiencing them are often quote stuck in their hallucinations such that they know they're awake but firmly believe that the sensory distortions around them are real. These hallucinations might be visual, auditory, tactile, etc. They might be associated with narcolepsy. They're less common than hypnagogic hallucinations, which are different in that hypnagogic hallucinations occur while falling asleep. So key point here, hypnopompic hallucinations occur awakening from sleep, hypnagogic hallucinations occur while going to sleep. And that's easy to remember because hypnagogic has go, going to sleep, in the name. Uh, hypno, hypnopompic hallucinations are not associated with other psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, etc. So that's just a brief aside as to what are hypnopompic hallucinations. And in a nutshell here, they're a type of hallucination that occur while awakening from sleep that are associated with narcolepsy and generally not associated with other psychiatric disorders. So now let's come back to the question. And even if you didn't know that this question stem was hinting at hypnopompic hallucinations, we could work backwards and eliminate incorrect answer choices. And that's the test taking strategy here. You wanna look at answer choices A, B, D, and E, and ask yourself, what are those answer choices alluding to? In other words, what diagnoses are they connected to? So let's work through those. So choice A must occur for at least six months. That's timeline criteria for schizophrenia. And so in this question stem, the test writer, me in this case, has kind of thrown you a curveball, and I told you that these hallucinations are occurring for at least six months, but you need to figure out from reading this passage that it's probably not schizophrenia and that hip, um, hypnopompic hallucinations are a better answer. Now, they're a better answer in this case because A, they occur while awakening, and B, the person has a past history of narcolepsy. And so given those two points, you want to lean in the direction of the hypnopompic hallucinations and not schizophrenia. If I wanted you to pick schizophrenia, I would have given you other psychotic symptoms besides just hallucinations, and the patient's age probably would have been a bit younger because somebody who's 40 years old, that's a little bit late to be having first, first episode psychosis. 
Now let's look at answer choice B, comorbid with hypertension. Comorbidity with hypertension is highly hinting at obstructive sleep apnea, but I've really given you no evidence, no clues in the question stem that that's what I want you to pick. If I wanted you to pick obstructive sleep apnea, I would have talked about obesity, I would have talked about snoring, I would have talked more about sleep, but I really didn't do that here, and so the better answer choice here is still choice C. Choice D, lack of any past psychiatric history, that really doesn't point you in the direction of anything, that's just a distractor, so we can ignore that. And then choice E occurs independently from depressive or manic symptoms. That's hinting heavily at schizoaffective disorder. Now recall the criteria for schizoaffective disorder is the presence of psychotic symptoms that last for at least two weeks without any depression or mania symptoms also occurring concurrently during those two weeks. In order for you to pick that diagnosis, you would be thinking somewhat along the lines of what we talked about with choice A, there would have been other psychotic symptoms, and I would have had to more clearly define for you what those two weeks looked like and that there weren't depression or mania symptoms. Now, I did throw you a curveball by telling you there weren't depression or mania symptoms, but that doesn't really matter because even in this question stem, the simple fact that the patient has a past medical history of narcolepsy and these hallucinations only occur while awakening from sleep should point you in the direction of hypnopompic hallucinations and not something like schizoaffective disorder. So that's the test taking strategy. High yield takeaway here, hypnopompic hallucinations are associated with narcolepsy and occur during awakening. Hypnogogic hallucinations occur while going to sleep. They're a little bit different, a little bit more common. But neither of these types of hallucinations are necessarily associated with primary psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. So I hope that this question was useful to you. Hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations are sneaky little things that do tend to show up on exams, so know this information well.